Hi folks, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Holly. I am an illustrator and book cover designer living here in usually sunny Nelson, New Zealand, uh, but it's looking a bit a bit grey out there, so I've got the overhead lights on. Apologies for the less than ideal lighting, but um, it's kind of necessary today. Today's vlog is kind of not really a vlog. It's going to be a little bit different to usual. It's going to be more of a catch-up between what's been happening since the last vlog. Basically I've done quite a bit in that time and for continuity's sake it makes sense to fill you in a bit. This is going to be a pretty chatty video. There will be some visuals but if you want to go and grab a cup of tea or do something else while you're watching this that would probably be a good idea. All right so the first thing I wanted to share with you are some new product designs or new designs for products. Primarily these two designs here, um, the first one being this mermaid design. This started out as sort of a, a little mermaid uh, narrative story kind of drawing. Uh, there, there were three things I wanted to include in this, in, in both of these pieces. The first was having more depth in the design, so having more of a sense of layering and distance, using colour to do that as well. The second thing was having a full bleed design, because most of my designs are sort of something that's almost like a spot illustration that goes in the middle of a book cover, and in this case I wanted it to go right out to the edges, and also to wrap right around this notebook. The third thing was to include more storytelling in the image, but I'll go into a little bit of that because there was quite a process with this one in particular. But I started off using a figure, a sort of a, a drowning figure in the distance and the tension in the story came from the mermaid character looking across, seeing this figure and going, what, what shall I do? Is that a decision point? Uh, and that's where the tension is for the viewer as well because you're not sure if, if she's going to go and save this figure or drown this figure further or, I don't know, whisk them away. You know, th there were many possibilities within that. That was all very well, but then I thought, well, actually, it's a bit of a cliche. And most of the stories about mermaids and sirens are to do with men drowning or throwing themselves into the sea because they hear their, their song. So actually, that's a little bit so-so uh, and I wanted to make the the story a little bit more interesting, a little bit less expected. Uh, so I played around with a few different things and, and thought of a few different uh, objects or things I could have in, in the background that was sinking to the bottom of the sea and in the end I thought well actually a, a plastic bag certainly has a story to it. Obviously a more contemporary and environmental message but it's something I haven't really seen done before and so it's not it's not cliched and that's what I was going for. Um, so yeah I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out the, with the detail and the different techniques I was playing around with. Um, the use of colour as well to create that that depth was something I really wanted to play around with and I think it worked out quite well. Um, I spent a whole day working on this. I didn't do anything else that day, literally just, just worked on this image and I'm, I think that that time paid off. And likewise with the Happy Prince design, I spent a long time on this one and the Happy Prince is a story by Oscar Wilde, it's a fairy tale and I often forget about it as a fairy tale because it's not Snow White or Cinderella or any of those that have been popularised through adaptation, but this is such a beautiful story and I remember seeing a theatre adaptation of it back when I was maybe eight or nine and it had a real impact on me. It's probably the first time I had come across a, a sort of tragic story that was also really beautiful. It just really affected me so I have wanted to do something to do with this story for a long time and I had wondered about doing illustrations for a picture book version of it but I actually saw at my local bookshop recently that somebody has created a, a new picture book version of it so I didn't really feel that that was necessary but I still wanted to create an image or some images around the story 
If you know the story, please let me know in, in the comments. That's the Happy Prince design. I have created a, a scarf version of this as well, which took nearly as long as the first one because I was having to adapt it and add detail in different ways. And yeah, I think it looks it looks pretty cool. And I'd have no idea if anybody's going to buy these designs, mostly because it's not a an especially well-known story. Um, but sometimes it's nice to do things that, that are a little bit different and I really wanted to do it. So I, it's not time wasted. Uh, yeah, so those are the, the products. They're going to go, or the designs are going to go on notebooks and some scarves. I've also done a couple of other scarves based on the Greek goddess notebook designs, as well as a tea themed one, um, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of tea. So it's gotta be good. And yeah, the other thing I've been looking at is t-shirts because T-shirts are a little less complicated than things like pins to create and they have a better profit margin than things like the notebooks and the scarves and they're generally a bit cheaper for people to buy. Also, it's something that you can wear and use more, more regularly maybe than something than a, like a scarf or, or a notebook if you're someone like me who tends to hoard notebooks and not actually use them. I think that's quite a common thing. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking into turning some of my older designs into t-shirts. So the novel notebook covers that I did over a year ago now are going to be some t-shirt designs, or at least I hope they will. I'm, I'm gonna try out and, and you know, see what the samples look like. And um, yeah, I might launch a few and see how they do. if if they sell and you know if you guys like them then I will do more. Uh, yeah I think they look really quite cool on this kind of marl effect background t-shirt colour. Um, yeah so that's that's a work in progress. I spent quite a bit of yesterday playing around with different t-shirt styles and colours and seeing what designs would work well. All right, the other thing I've been working on are a set of pre-made covers, which are things that usually indie authors can buy and they can use for their book covers. It's a cheaper option than going with a, a custom designed book. And because I create the, the artwork from scratch for, for my covers, it is, it's, it's not the cheapest process. So, um, you know, I, I know that I charge quite a bit more than a lot of book cover designers out there. And that is purely because I'm creating everything, including the typography um, myself. Uh, so for these ones, I'm creating the imagery and using existing typography, so fonts, um, to create the title and the author name. And basically an author can go and, and buy one of these and I will adapt it to their their book. So put the, the appropriate title and author name on there. And that's why I'm using a font. It's just because that's much easier to adapt. Um, but if, if an author wants to pay a bit more, then I can do the custom typography on there. Uh, so yeah, I've got about three or four of these done so far and I will be launching them soon I hope. Uh, just got a little bit more work to do on creating some uh, sort of preview graphics and making it nice and clear what they are and, and what the process is because it is sort of part product, part, part service. So it's a little bit more complicated than doing just one or the other. Uh, yeah, and I've got a couple of client jobs on at the moment, which obviously I, I can't share at the moment, but they're very exciting and I'm looking forward to sharing them. There are a few other things that I have finished and have gone out to the world that can now be shared, including this cover that I did for Lit Joy Crate. And this was an add-on for their year six box. It's a notebook and I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Uh, I believe they're sending me a copy of it. So uh, I will share that when it arrives, no doubt in a vlog. Um, but I've seen it on other people's Instagrams and it just just looks fantastic. I'm really pleased with the production of it. 
uh, there's foil involved and end papers and this was a such a fun product to to work on and yeah so I've got a couple more really exciting products that I'm that I'm working on as well and um it just it brings me a lot of joy working with with book subscription boxes. It's a wonderful process and then there's the the whole sort of extra validation I guess of them then going out to customers and people tagging me in their unboxings and everything and it's it's just really nice um, all up. So yeah, two other updates. <laughs> One being that my laptop which is here uh, it's a MacBook Air that I got back in 2014. That's been what I've what I've been working on for the past five years. For a while it's been at the point where I haven't really been able to run it optimally because I'm running a lot of different programs on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm still working in iMovie because uh, for these videos because I don't think I, it has the capacity to run Premiere Pro, but when I do upgrade which is what I'm going to talk about in a moment. Um, I will work on a, you know, learn that software and do, be able to do a little bit more than I would on iMovie. Um, but yeah, between that and Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator and Lightroom and everything else, it, it's all, yeah, it's it's a little bit hard on the the poor computer. It's it's also an issue that it keeps running out of memory, even though I've got most of my stuff on the cloud. Um, it's, it's all the programs and of course the video footage takes up a lot of space. Um, so a couple of days ago I bit the bullet and I, I bought an iMac. Oh it was a lot of money. I mean I could have bought a new car for that. I mean not, not a new car but I could have bought a car. Um, yeah it's a lot of it's it's a lot to spend on one thing but it's so essential to what I do so yeah, hopefully that will arrive next week. I'm going to have to rearrange most of, well, a, a lot of what's going on in the studio. I'm no longer going to be able to have my desk in the middle of the room looking out at the sea, which is a little bit sad, uh, but I don't want to have the computer in the middle of the room where it could get knocked over and obviously cords have to go in different places and um, all of that. So I might do an updated uh, studio tour once that's all set up. Let me know down below if you're interested in that. Uh, yeah, so my bank account is looking quite sad at the moment because uh, I basically had to put all my savings towards this computer. So I'm hoping that I can get the product designs up and running quickly. Um, obviously, I will need a bit of money for that as well for samples and um, and some some setup fees. But yeah, that might put it back a little bit but like I said I've got a couple of jobs on at the moment so hopefully that will cover some of those costs. Uh, yeah and finally I wanted to talk about these things here. These are not very fashionable. In fact my, my boss at my um, at the office where I do some freelance work described them as being homeless chic so thank you, Dave. Um, but these are compression gloves. And if you've been on Instagram at all lately, you might have seen ads for them. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. Um, I just wanted to talk about them because they have been absolutely fantastic. I have been struggling with pains in my hands and wrists and up and into my neck. And it's coming from my neck and back. And these are just fantastic for managing the pain. They don't solve the problem, but they do, they're compression. So they, they put pressure on your hands and fingers and joints, and that helps, helps with the pain. So if I'm video editing or doing anything that's quite computer heavy, which tends to be when they get sorest, that, uh, these are fantastic. So I'll link them down below if you're interested, because I know some of you had mentioned previously when I've talked about this that, that you have similar issues or you're dealing with carpal tunnel or, or anything like that. Um, these are designed for that and for arthritis and I really highly recommend them. I've just ordered a second pair actually um, because I think I'm going to be wearing them quite a bit. Uh, yeah. And on that front, my, my back is actually feeling quite a bit better than it has been. 
I, I noticed a real difference, a dramatic shift on, on Monday when I was working in at the office. And yeah, that's the first time in a long time that I've been able to work for the full day without too much pain at all. So I think things are improving and that's a mixture of doing yoga, having massages and um, swimming, doing different stretches and now these. Uh, I don't think these are the things that have tipped it over the edge because like I said they, they just sort of manage the pain but yeah um, oh I'm getting a new chair that that was definitely a good idea as well so yeah do let me know if if you deal with these kinds of issues and and check out these because they they've been really helpful to me so they might be to you as well all right I better go and let the dog in she's out in the rain at the moment <laughs> you might be able to hear her whining thank you very much for watching um next week's vlog or the next time I do a vlog will be much less rambly than this it'll be you know back to its usual format basically so thank you very much for watching um and I will see you in the next one <laughs> bye